So this is a quick video on how to, hopefully quick, take apart and flash these Sonoff S60s. Uh, I got a few of these a while ago because um, they looked interesting. They're a very attractive small plug with um, quite the high current handling capacity, 16 amps. So that's pretty nice. It's the Sonoff S60 TPF. It does power monitoring and it has the relay in it as well for switching it on and off. So before buying them, I looked if anyone had taken them apart, if there was any support in ESP Home, which is what I use. Uh, I did not find that. I did find a GitHub discourse or a discussion thread from Winwin. Um, it's just, I like saying the name that way. I hope it's not wrong. Uh, they have a very, very detailed teardown and uh, discussion thread on this. So I will link to that. Um, but yeah, so there are a few things I couldn't find in the thread. They might be there, I might just be blind, um, but it's minor things. Uh, actually, it's two things. Uh, yeah, um, it's what screwdriver you need. I just happen to be lucky. This is pretty much what they have a picture of in their thread. Uh, there is a screw down here in the end of this of this grounding hole, and a T6 screwdriver works, which is lucky because it's the only thing I have that, that is thin enough to go down there. You need to have about two centimeters or one and a half, whatever that is, off uh, reach with a thin screwdriver. It's T6 works, but the screw is actually a hex 1.3 millimeter. So whatever you have of those two will work. You undo that screw down there. Once you've undone that screw, um, the less fun part comes and you get some channel locks or a vise or whatever. And you just start squeezing. And let's see if I can do it on this one with one hand. You just start squeezing around the edge of this Yeah, I can't do that one-handed, at least not left-handed. You start squeezing around the edge of this to break the bond to the white uh, shell because this is ultrasonically welded in spots, yeah, fairly white spots, pretty much all the way around. It is fairly easy to do when you just grab the gray part and squeeze like that. Now it's broken there and then you just you turn it and do it and turn it and do it and turn it and do it until this is free and then this lifts out. Once that lifts out, the less fun parts come and that is, I believe it's easy if you undo this screw because this gray plastic, while it, it can come out with this, it is clipped to the PCB so it's, yeah, it's, it's, take out that screw, that is a Phillips one and then you desolder uh, this point and lift out the bracket, I found Grabbing this leg with um, like sticking some tweezers through the legs and pulling up while heating the joint made it easy to lift off. Once you have that off, you can take out these blue thermal pads and then under those there's the two solder points for uh, live and neutral. So you have to undo those two. This, is, this desoldering stuff is what makes it really annoying. Uh, everyone else in that thread thought so too. Win-win uh, thought so too. He, they made a... Um, resin printed jig, but it, from what I can read in the discussion, it is not foolproof either. And the way it seems to be used is you slide it down the side and you just keep trying it until you hit the RX and TX legs. And then uh, they powered with five volts, I believe, through those two connections. Um, right. And then you can see the programming pegs over here. But yeah, um, they seem to have gotten 8 out of 10 of their sockets program, programmed that way. I do believe I will just desolder. Um, for desoldering, you do need a somewhat capable soldering iron. Uh, what I found works great is a Secure S60 um, with their included power supply, which I believe is 30 watts. Uh, 12 volts, 3 amps, so a little more, but yeah, 36 watts, uh, with, and that is, I think, important, a genuine JBC cartridge tip. Um, you do need 
the 30 watts or 20 or whatever but anyways the 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 wattage from 5 volts so powered from a, a USB hub for example will not work um, it'll heat up to 450 very slowly and the moment you touch it to the solder joint these solder joints are chunky and beefy enough that they will just wick away all the heat so a soldering iron capable of delivering 20 30 watts to the joint so it might it might be a 60 watt soldering iron but it also has to be able to get it out through the tip and into the joint that's uh, why i would recommend something with these integrated tip cartridge heater style but yeah anyways once you desolder that uh and you can actually do this I, I would probably do that opposite order but there's also some glue around and some spots around the side you can see a large glue wisp up here this is some fairly soft glue and i just picked it away with tweezers uh, works pretty well and then once that is out i will as i mentioned link to the to the post but then there is on the other side of this board there are test points that you can solder or touch your um you add uh, USB to UART adapter to to do an initial flash and then from there on over the air should be thankfully fine and then once you put it back together uh, it is as simple or difficult depending on how good desoldering equipment you have as uh, putting the PCB back on and soldering it back on putting putting everything back on in reverse soldering it back up and then when you close it up it actually does seal pretty nicely with the um, threaded inserts and machine screw so if you need the either the small compact form factor it does not take up much more space than a um, shuko plug uh, or and or you need the power monitoring this is a pretty nice option uh, but it is a lot of work to get adopted into a test motor or esp home i would I'm tempted to, to <laughs> I'm tempted to, well, I'm not going to do it because I'm not into that part of, I'm not into that. This makes no sense. And now I'm brain locking myself. Uh, I hope that someday someone can figure out a way to maybe snoop on how Sonoff does over the air updates. I'm assuming there's some update functionality in the original firmware. And if it can do that, uh, you should be able to set up a a um, some sort of special Wi-Fi hotspot that you can connect this to and it will have a spoofed DNS server that lies to it and says, hey, I have an update for you. I am not too optimistic that that is doable because this they might do updates over SSL, or like over a secure connection, and, and they might need a... A certificate so then if that's the case you you can't do it unless they leak their certificate um, the best option of course would be official support from Sonoff which I don't think will happen but um, yeah that's about it <laughs>